Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and More Democracy 3 Presidential Suite playing as Soviet Russia. Oh, we're going into our final year of this campaign everybody and the economy is in fantastic shape. Everyone is happy, everyone is healthy, everyone is getting educated properly. And last time we banned all that private healthcare and education stuff that might give people an unfair competitive advantage. How dare they? No. For the good, the, everything shall be public. Everything in Russia shall be public for the good of the collective. That's what we're doing. We're also trying to get rid of that machine uprising. Cyber warfare is gone. That's kind of nice. Foreign subversion seems to be still a bit of a problem, but trying to get rid of that alcohol abuse. Not sure if it's going to work, but we're trying. And uh, otherwise, yeah, now is our last chance, literally our last chance to uh, pass some particularly ideological policies, regardless of how well they work. So let's go ahead and move on into year 12. Not dead yet, that's good. And uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see what we can get through. Ban sandwich boards from sidewalks. What the heck is a sandwich board? Oh, really? Okay, shopkeepers usually ad advertise through sandwich boards on sidewalks. Okay, so those are those um, kind of two boards that lean on each other with like, I don't know, uh, they either got like a chalk blackboard or a whiteboard and people are just like, advertising their products on the sidewalks in front of their stores. Seniors and people with disabilities are troubled by their walking path is blocked and require government regulation. Really? That important, huh? Okay. We can regulate it. Should not be commercialized. The sidewalk belongs to the public. Yes. Let's do that. I don't even have to read the other one. You say it's for the good of the public? That's good enough for me. Hello, Homer Simpson. When will people learn democracy doesn't work? Oh, don't you know what you're talking about, Homer? Homer J. Simpson, absolutely. All right, I think it's time, guys. I know you guys have been looking for it for a long time. I don't see any reason to hold off at this point. It's our final year. Let's go ahead and officially commit to a planned economy. The planned economy is a defining feature of a socialist country. Proponents say that the government planning can ensure equality, full employment, and efficient use of resources and infrastructure, especially for the military. Critics argue that the government prevents creative forces of entrepreneurship and causes corruption. Well, that's certainly to be certainly true. So let's take a quick look-see here. And hopefully you guys can see why I didn't go for this sooner, because it's not actually going to help us in ways that we really care that much. So socialists are thrilled. Self-employment goes away. Okay, good. Unemployment goes down a lot. So we're talking 32%, which means we are pretty much guaranteeing a labor shortage and possibly a skill shortage as well by doing this. But... Equality gets absolutely maxed out. I mean, we're already very close to maxed out, but for the sake of it, we probably should do this too. Our oil supply goes up, people use trains more, high earnings plummet. No one is wealthy in a planned economy. There are no entrepreneurs. The state takes all the capital risks and in investments. You don't get a profit from anything. Also, corruption goes up by 26%, and it's pretty expensive. This is the reason we haven't done this in the past. I've not wanted to reduce our unemployment. I don't need to improve our equality. Oil supply is nice, but not for this cost and that much corruption. That's why I haven't bothered with it thus far, but for the sake of the playthrough and the theme, we absolutely have to do this now. So let's go ahead and pass the planned economy. And while we were at it, while we are at it, I think we should also... There's something I'm looking for. There it is, I found it. Okay, first off, okay, first off, let's go ahead and address something real quick. I know people keep asking for me to do the purge. I'm not gonna do the purge. If this was a purge that would let you, let's say, purge all political opposition, right, red terror, okay, that would thematically make some sense. This is just purging all the poor people who can't afford private security. No, it's not, it's not, it doesn't make sense. We're not going for a dystopia playthrough, we're going for, we're going for the USSR. And they purge the rich and the political opponents, not necessarily the poor. So I don't think we want to go for that. Also, like, I saw someone say we should do, like, street judges. No, that's also not very good. What we shouldn't do instead, though, absolutely should do, is forced labor. Yeah, forced labor means that some categories of people will only receive substance for working and might get punished for refusal or resistance. While prison labor and penal community service are commonly accepted, sending vagrants and unemployed people to labor camps is more controversial. Non-democratic nations might also round up political opponents. <laughs> that sounds like something we need to do. Absolutely. Now, the downside is this really, really upsets the trade unions. I mean, I'd love to do all enemies of the states must work in camps. It just really upsets people. Foreign relations also goes down. Wages goes down. The environment improves, though. Health goes down a crap ton. But alcohol abuse also goes away. So, oh, by the way, it also counts as, like, a tax. We get to profit from this. 
Slave labor. We don't pay for it, we just profit. <laughs> I can make some serious moolah. Total exploitation. That would be terrible. No, we can't afford to upset the uh, trade unionists quite this much. As fun as it would be, fun as it would be, I don't know if this is actually something we want to invest very heavily in. Maybe we should only do, like, criminals and vagrants should, uh, should have to go through this, because I don't want to tank our health. I would love to get rid of alcohol abuse and reduce wages a little bit to make us more productive, but I can't afford to upset the trade unionists this much. I've never done this policy before. I just looked at it and I'm like, that sounds appropriate. We should do that. All enemies of the state must be sent to camps. But um, I didn't realize it was going to upset them quite this much. So yeah, we have to do something less. Let's just go for like 2.5 billion. Yeah, it reduces our health. We're already over the max, so that's not a big deal. Environment goes up, alcohol abuse goes down, wages go down, foreign relations, not a big deal. The biggest downside is we're upsetting the trade unionists, but just for the heck of it, I wanted to give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> it was a fun idea. It was a fun idea while it lasted. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move on into the next turn and see if we don't die. Good, we're not dead. Okay. Mortgage rate rise. That's not good. That means that housing is getting too expensive. Middle income goes down a lot, and homelessness goes up, but I think we'll be fine. Credit rating upgraded. Now we're at double B. Well, thank God, people are finally recognizing that my GDP is in good shape, and we are paying off our debt at a record pace. 60 billion ruble surplus already. That is amazing. Unemployment did get reduced down to practically zero here, and somehow it's still ticking back up. That's because the planned economy hasn't fully taken effect yet. Kind of surprised by that, actually. Huh. I mean, okay, I don't want it to take full effect yet. That's good. Let's keep the unemployment relatively high. Okay, what else we want to do? Um, one thing I thought we ought to do is try to reestablish common turn. Yeah, some of you guys might know about that. That's basically an alliance of socialist slash communist nations that were basically a bunch of satellite states around the USSR. They formed an alliance very similar to the Axis powers called common turn. If we want to form a continental union, that might be an option for us. It could be pretty expensive for us, but let's see what it does. I've never done this before either. Okay, so we have an observing member of some sort of continental union. So, like, an observing member in the EU. Got it. Trade agreements. Okay. Economic community. Supranational union. That sounds like what we want. Monetary union. Confederation. Federation. We don't want to do that because it upsets patriots way too much. Apparently, patriots don't like the idea of us being a member of some other country that gives, like, away, uh, let's say, some sort of... Um, Sovereignty, right? Gives away sovereignty to a foreign governing body. I'm not looking at quite being like that. As far as I'm concerned, we are the governing body and everyone now works for us. But, I mean, okay. I understand why it's not going over well for us here. Uh, but for the sake of theme, just pretend that this isn't a problem and we're creating basically common turn by going for Continental Union. That's what I'm going for there. The other thing that we need to do is raise up our private pensions because they are too low right now. We, this, is one of the, this is one of the state things that we forgot about. It's going to cost me a lot of money to do this, but we have a huge surplus. We should be getting rid of private pensions and having everyone work for the state there as well. Anything else that we want to do right now? You know what? I do know what I want to do next turn, but we have to save up some political capital for that as well. So let's go ahead and move on into the next turn. Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. Not dead. Good. Okay. Uh, machine uprising is at an end. Good! The death of the machines. Turns out the Luddites were right to be worried, and we have killed them. Good. Humankind is now the master of machines again. Housing expansion. There is a shortage of homes. Yes, we did see the mortgage rates rise. And the government is under pressure to relax planning laws and allow previously restricted green belt land to be built on. We could relax it. House prices are rising far faster than earnings, due mainly to the shortage of supply. That is certainly, that's certainly uh, an aspect of it, yeah. In the long term, the only solutions are to build more housing. Or, or, hear me out, to um, purge all the, all the excess people. <laughs> that would also work. Kill the demand. Ha! Ah, literally kill it. It's no, provi uh, no good providing housing where there are no jobs. And if that means building on a small proportion of greenbelt land, that is the price we have to pay. Or, keep the planning restrictions. There is always pressure to build new homes on greenfield sites because companies find them cheaper and easier to build on them. Well, in this case, not companies, just the state. There are plenty of urban sites that could be reused if we resort to carving up the countryside. A sudden expansion in the Green Belt would have a dreadful impact on the rural communities. Well, one of the aspects of uh, proper socialist states is it does, tend to, um, it does tend to get more people to congregate in urban areas, whereas I find proper rural ag agrarian communism tends to get people out more toward the suburbs and the rural areas. But for our cases, though, I think we just go ahead and relax the uh, planning laws. We've been trying to improve the environment a lot, but historically, I don't think the USSR cared quite that much about it. 
but maybe we're a new version of the USSR. I don't know. But the important thing is the machines are dead, and we're trying to fix our mortgage rate rise by increasing the supply. That makes a lot of sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? Of course it does. Okay, what else should we do? I know what I want to do. This is going to be fun. Let's do this. Hang on. There you are. Let's do a Mars program. People have been asking for this for a long time, and you know what? It makes sense. I think Russia goes into space and sets up a Mars base and claims the Red Planet for the Red Nation. <laughs> Tabloids have begun speaking of a new space age for a while. It is time to reach for the stars. Why not start with the neighbor planet Mars? The Mars program yields new technological innovations, unites the country, and makes patriots proud. It's also very expensive, but that's okay. I say we go for it. We could have a Mars observatory, a Mars satellite, an autonomous, I'm guessing, land rover, uh, manned missions, or better yet, Mars base. Space colonization. Russia can is into space. Technology goes way up, religious membership goes down, patriots are absolutely thrilled, and unemployment goes down as well. But the aerospace industry gets a pretty big boost. I say we go for it. We will claim the angry red planet for our angry red nation. Why did we just click on that somehow? I guess I double clicked without meaning to. Yeah, that's fun. Cool. We've got a Mars program, everybody. Aren't you excited? You should be. That was the wrong button. Uh, what else do we want to do? We're very close to the end. That's actually kind of everything I wanted to do uh, for this particular for this particular series. Uh, I wanted to get, you know, all guns confiscated. I wanted to have a nuclear program. I wanted to ban all private forms of the economy, whether that be uh, healthcare or education. I wanted to move toward a planned economy, reestablish common turn, um, strengthen our military, and colonize Mars. That seems like the proper the proper uh, place for Russia in the the geopolitical stage. We've managed to get back to that. So as far as I'm concerned, we've basically done it now. And surprisingly, we did so with a maxed out GDP, phenomenally wealthy. I mean, yeah, we had some serious problems with our debt for a while, but we're actually paying it off at a record pace because we're so dang good at our jobs. I'm so sexy. Yeah. All right. Foreign relations, not doing that great thanks to the Continental Union and stuff, but oh well, what really can we do about it? The only downside is the environment keeps going down. But uh, you know what? I don't really think there's much we can do about that right now. I think that's going to be okay. Dental program, are you surprisingly not done? How can you not be done? You should be. Oh, well. Let's save the rest of our points. Let's see if there's anything else that we can do that's really expensive that's really cool. Of course, assuming that we don't die, that would be a bit of a problem. Yay! We didn't die. They tried to. They tried, but they failed. Stupid liberals. You've been trying to kill me for 12 years. I'm bulletproof. Can't kill me. Credit rating gets upgraded. Awesome! Now we're up to a triple B. It's still not great, but it's better. Manifesto promises are now available because we are going into an election. Don't really think I care that much about it. We have 50 political capital that we can spend. Um, we could do a few things. What if we did general media censorship? I mean, yeah, we could do, like, torture usage or secret courts, but... I mean, realistically, crime is more or less under control in this country. That's not so much of an issue, and we don't need to keep increasing police brutality. They're already very squarely under our thumb. If we were having, you know, a lot of other issues, like let's say crime was super high and we had a general strike, sure, then I would capture some people and probably torture their leaders. But we don't have to worry about waterboarding here. They're already pretty much subdued and quite happy. But we do need to make sure that people are not speaking poorly of our leader and our new communist nation, so let us monitor the media. Uh, specifically, all media. All media must be monitored. Holy crap, this reduces liberalism membership so much. Oh my god. But, but, it reduces education by 22% and greatly increases corruption. But you know what? I don't even care. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, the only reason I haven't done this in the past is because I really, really don't want to reduce my education. But reducing liberalism membership is kind of cool. Yeah. No one's going to be liberal in Russia in the next few years because... Well, you don't know any better. You don't know anything about human rights. Who needs any of those? Those are ridiculous. Don't be crazy. All right. Well, we never were able to get... Oh, wait. Oh, we're so close. So close to being able to get rid of the alcohol abuse. All right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we've basically managed to get rid of that. Not quite technically, but we're really close. Police brutality is pretty low. Civil rights, yeah, that's never going anywhere. Corruption has officially been maxed out. Yes, I consider that a success as well. Not really, but you know what I mean. Air pollution is down lower than it's ever been. Uh, Luddite riots never going to go away. Dental stuff, I'm really surprised about this, but it's because my GDP got maxed out. I mean, we could try to fix this by doing treatment for all, and I guess i go ahead and do that. Why not? We only have seven political capital left. Let's see if we can do a manifesto. We could promise to raise taxes, or cut some. Raise state health care, mineral tax, military spending. 
Mm, speeches? Don't have enough capital for that. Fundraising, not a big deal. We could do a media stunt and try to improve our trust. Let's let's do a media stunt and try to get people to trust me more. Um, we will do... We will do a televised cabinet meeting. And there we go! Huzzah! We are perceived as neutral. Not untrustworthy, but we're very strong and very compassionate. Yes. <laughs> Worship me. Worship me, you fools, you plebs. Oh, wait. Sorry. Did I say that out loud? So the bourgeoisie still have several million members, but whatever. I mean, I don't understand why no one's joining my party. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But, oh well. The point is, everyone's going to have to vote for me. Uh, we'll round up anyone who doesn't, and um, we'll send them to the uh, forced labor camps. That sounds good, right? Oh, fun stuff. Let's go ahead and move on into the election. This is the end of the series, everybody. Let's start the count. All right, so we got a few million traitors that need to die. Got it. We'll, we'll, af af after I end this video, I'll instruct my secret police to round them up and uh, capture their families and send them to the work camps. But in the meantime, easy victory for me. The fact that we have so many non-voters is unfortunate, but oh well, what can you do? Break it down. Capitalists, incredibly unhappy. Liberals, surprisingly, despite the fact that they despise me, still voted for me. Self-employed and the wealthy are the other big ones that uh, were not happy about it. Ethnic minorities, that does not surprise me. I am surprised that we didn't get massive votes from socialists, but at the same time, I guess I shouldn't be, because... Um, keep in mind, when you have a particular party that's been in the majority for a very long time, they actually have an event called complacency that gradually increases over time, where they are less likely to vote for you and be happy with you, just because they get complacent which is a bit of a problem. So socialists were in the majority for so long, I guess it shouldn't be surprised that we didn't get every single one of them to vote for us. Let's take a look at the changes. Health, education, crime, violent crime, poverty, equality, the environment even improved in my tenure. Working week is lower, people don't have to work as much, they can enjoy more leisure as Karl Marx would have wanted. Technology has gone up, car usage is down, rail usage and bus usage is up. Productivity has gone up by 49%. Everyone is employed. Of course, CO2 emissions went up. We had practically no economy to begin with. But that's still not too bad. In previous playthroughs, I've seen my CO2 emissions go up by like 60%. So there you go. People are flying planes. Immigration's a bit of a problem. Not happy about that, actually, but it's because we're so wealthy. That's the problem. As soon as you become wealthy, everyone wants to come into your country. The only real way to get rid of that is to ban all foreign church services and max out border controls and stuff like that. Energy efficiency is good. We're trading more. People like us. Racial tension, surprisingly, is down. Oil demand has gone up, but our oil supply went down, so that's not so good. Yet, even so, oil prices have gone down, so people can afford it. Look at this! Wait a minute, why? Why have the high earnings gone up? There should be no high earnings! I have a planned economy! The poor are doing great. Middle in earnings were better earlier. I don't know about this, though. Why? GDP has gone up by 72%. There should be no private anything at this point. Wait a minute, private pensions went up by 100%? How did that happen? I guess it didn't pass the state pension soon enough. That's interesting. Tobacco usage, traffic congestion, alcohol consumption, tourism, wages, 67% in the last 12 years. That's pretty good. Currency strength is maxed out. The average temperature can't help that. But otherwise, I mean, across the board, I would say these are some really, really solid changes for us. And the capitalists still want us dead. Oh, that's fun. Drug addiction. Well, not my problem. I'm passing the torch on to somebody else. We've never really figured out a good way to deal with this. I've always thought, I've always thought that there ought to be a policy in the game, uh, like uh, kind of like the dental program, but specifically for drugs, where the government invests in rehabilitation programs and stuff like that. I've always thought that should be in the game, and yet somehow it's not. We also got a flash crash, but again, not my problem. So let's see, why did, why did, uh, what's immigration look like? So despite the fact that immigration went way up, apparently, let's take a look, see. Oh my God. Yes, it went way up. Well, ethnic minorities' membership is still only 35%. Probably should be a little bit less than that, to be honest. But, wait a minute, hang on. Immigration's barely touching this, despite the fact that we have so much. That's interesting. I wonder if they got rebalanced in the mod pack and I wasn't aware. That would make sense. I mean, I'm, I'm glad if so, but... Huh. Fascinating. Anyway, state pensions. Uh, sorry, private pensions. Wow, those are maxed out. It's because of the GDP and the currency strength. Interesting. The ruble is such a strong currency right now that people want to invest it at home and they keep investing for their own benefit. Well, I can't really allow that now, can I? There's actually not much I can do about it right now. Oh well, it's probably fine. And if we wanted to get rid of our um, excess... Uh, if we want to get rid of our excess ethnic minorities, 
You can just do something that's simple like banning foreign church services like so. Greatly reduces immigration, really upsets the ethnic minorities, but that's okay. Religious membership goes down, racial tension goes up, just ban everything. I mean, we have state atheism anyway, right? So it shouldn't really matter. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to have to end this series. I think this was a resounding success. I hope you guys agree with me. That was pretty fun. It was a little hairy, but at some point, we really just kind of took off. So, I mean, I would say this is a good success, and we were able to recreate, I would say, the Soviet Union as close as we are able to get within the confines of the game, and thankfully, the Presidential Suite mod pack has opened up a lot of different options, which makes it quite fun. I do hope that everyone enjoyed this series, I hope that uh, you will hit that like button, leave your support, and of course, subscribe if you want to see my future content, but if I think for now, I think for now I'm done with Democracy 3, and I'm going to move on to some other series, because I know people are looking forward to seeing things like this War of Mine come back, so thank you all very much for sticking along. I've had a heck of a lot of fun. I hope you have too. I will see you guys next time. Thank you all for watching, comrades.